Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Cave Music History Series, a special music feature from one publisher uh, brought to you by me, Patrick Gann, and a fellow video game music lover, Don Katowski. Hi, Don. Hi, Pat. How are you? I'm good. And, and Don, who, are, who do you represent in, in this venture? I write for Square Enix Music Online, although very soon that will be changing to a new name. Yes. And a new website. Today's recording date is March 10th, 2013, and I note that date because it'll have an impact on a variety of things we'll be covering in today's special feature video. Don mentioned he's a writer for SEMO. SEMO has incredible coverage of music from the publisher Cave. In the English-speaking world, you really can't find much better than what they have over there. And Don's not the only one who appreciates Cave, though I would say he's probably if you had to pick a super fan out of the bunch, I would be hard-pressed to pick anyone but Don. Do you agree with that sentiment, Don? <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't like to consider myself a super fan of anything, but I would say that I'm a big fan, and I guess having every album they publish makes me a super fan, then so be it. <laughs> then so be it. Anyway, my name is Patrick Gann, and if you're looking at the YouTube channel and you know who I am, you know that I'm a blog writer for Gamasaurus.com, OriginalSoundVersion.com. Uh, I have a large body of work, though I don't do much active writing anymore for RPGFan.com, and I'm a, just a guy on the internet. And we want this video to serve as a resource for everybody. Uh, you could be a newcomer, you heard some music, you heard someone say, man, those cave soundtracks, it's got super sweep. Uh, it's got Bass Escape, it's got some people you've never heard of, then they got these arranged albums that's got everyone you've heard of, and you start listening to them and you're like, wow, I need to know more. We want this to be for you. We also want it to be for you, yes you, the person who is thinking, I know so much more about Cave than Pat Gann will ever know. And to those people, I say welcome. I hope uh, you'll enjoy watching the video and listening to our commentary and critiquing me on the mistakes I make along the way, because there's nothing I like more than finding out that things I held to be true were wrong. And uh, when we talk about 30, well, actually about 40 albums, I may have a factoid wrong here or there. That's part of why I have Don here, though, because Don knows quite a bit about the artists and the developer and publisher that is Cave. So Don, why don't we start by talking in general a bit about who Cave is, how they got started, and where they are now. Well, I'm, I'm not, I wouldn't say that I'm the aficionado on the history of Cave, but from what I have gathered, they weren't like strong enough to publish their games on their own yet, so they had games like, you know, companies like Capcom publish their games like Pro Gear, and then eventually they became their own entity. Yeah. Wasn't the original Don Pachi, was that published by Atlas back in the day, like on consoles? <sighs> yes, it was published by Atlas. Yeah, Atlas. For the arcade, yeah. Yeah, oh, okay, the, even the arcade version. So they had Atlas helping them, and eventually they grew big enough to start publishing the games on their own. Cave primarily makes shooters, Donmaku shooters, what you might call bullet hell or bullet curtain games, the kind of really crazy shmups that give you a headache and uh, that I've quickly become addicted to. If you're interested in their catalog and you want a relatively cheap and easy way to play them, about half of their games are available in English for the iOS. So if you have an iPad or an iPhone or an iPod Touch, uh, you can get Death Smiles, a couple different Doranpachi games. You can get Mushihime-sama, they call it uh, Bug Princess, which is sort of an accurate translation of that name. I think they even have Esp Galudo or ESP Galudo, whatever you want to call it. I think that's on there as well. The second one is... Yes, the second one is, and you can get it normal or black label version. And so there's there's plenty to check out in terms of playing the games. Now, it was in 2003 that Cave sort of broke off and became their own entity, and alongside publishing their own games both on console and in the arcade, uh, they opened their own online shop and started selling their own CDs and publishing their own CDs so their soundtracks weren't limited to you know, trying to get another publisher to pick it up. Now, during this time, other publishers still did do some things, and we'll note that later where those happen at the end of this show. But 
for the most part, the publication of Cave soundtracks in physical form started in 2003 and sort of came to a close in 2012. And the way that works is essentially, and Don, correct me if I'm wrong, but they announced they were closing their online shop and that they weren't going to do the Cave Online Matsuri anymore. That doesn't mean, though, that they're necessarily done printing CDs, because one line of their CDs, the CVAS, which is supposed to be like the packet and catalog number prefix, so you buy the limited edition of the game and the CDs there. Well, that's more, I would just say that's more like the arrange, because they did publish things under that catalog number that weren't packing games. Oh, that's true. Yeah. So anyway, but they did do they did do pack-in releases alongside completely separate releases, and it looks like the separate releases have sort of fallen to the wayside because they can't afford it. They don't feel they can, you know, uh, rationalize doing that that kind of publication of the music. But in two months, in May of 2013, Doran Pachi Maximum for Xbox 360 will come out, and it looks like there will be a soundtrack. With that, it'll be new arrangements. Is that right, Don? Yeah, I think Space Escape is handling the new arrangements, like they did with Mushihime-sama. The, right, the Mushihime-sama Special Edition, which came out in May of last year, which was the last CD they've published to date. It looks like they're doing one for Pachi Maximum. So that won't be covered in this because I can't go into the future. So right now we're gonna we're gonna start by looking at all. Cave CDs published from 2003 to 2012. The only thing we'll be excluding are drama albums and CDs whose contents are fully found elsewhere, like those very rare singles, like the Eba Love Song single. You can find that in its full version on the OST or on Cave No Uta. And then there's, like, for example, the Instant Brain Sound Selection, which is a single disc, but that can be found in its entirety on the perfect soundtrack. So if you follow along, uh, for example, in VGMDB, and we'll have a link in the comments of the video, you can see the full list of Cave publications. After we're done talking about all 37 albums that we cover for the 2003 to 2012 published by Cave, we're going to talk about a handful of albums that were not published by Cave, but are indeed Cave music. So are you ready to go, Don? I'm ready. All right, let's do it. And I want to throw in before we go any further... This is my little disclaimer. Cave, anyone from Cave listening, your legal department, etc. Please know that most of it is under our voice before it goes to full audio. We don't want this video to be pulled down for any sort of violation. We're trying to let the fans know about what we think are some of the best songs from your collection and really promote what we think is an excellent body of work on your part. So we hope you'll appreciate it and not have any qualms with it. And uh, hey, that goes for the fans too. If you think this video sucks, uh, we hope you find something to appreciate about it, too. And we are starting out with an album from 2003. This is Doran Pachi Daiojo slash Ketsui Kizuna Jigo Gutachi original soundtrack. So Daiojo and, and Ketsui OSTs put together. This was Cave's first soundtrack published as a CD from Cave. So the first track we're going to listen to, and this is a selection from Don. As we go through these, the order will be a song that Don likes, followed by a song that I, Patrick, like, and we'll go back and forth like that. So the first song here is from Ketsui, it's the Stage 1 theme, Interception. Go ahead, Don, tell us about it. Well, yeah, I think this is probably one of his most iconic Stage 1 themes. I mean, when I listen to shmup soundtracks, I always find it important to have, like, a really strong Stage 1 theme. I don't know if that's just myself, but I really think this really captures the whole atmosphere of Ketsui quite well. Yeah, absolutely. And when you say him, we're referring to Manabu Namiki, who is probably composed the most in in sum for all Cave soundtracks. He's probably done the most work of any one person. He's probably composed the most schmups out of any one person also. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, he doesn't just do Cave soundtracks. I, you know, we should point that out. But he's done a... We'll mention his name many, many times as we go through this, but... You know, I agree a strong stage one theme is good, and you guys are hearing it now. It is a very strong theme. I'll say also, as we transition over to my pick, there's there's a format to way these the way these soundtracks work, and it has a lot to do with the format of the game. But we'll take a little listen to the Katsui track and then uh, on to mine.
Okay, so now we're listening to track 22 from this CD. Uh, this CD is Cave's first publication, CVST 0000. Track 22 is Strange Dance, stage 3 of Doronpachi Daiojo. And something I wanted to mention about the format of most Cave soundtracks is basically you have 12 to 15 songs for any given soundtrack. You get an opening title or stage select or character select song. Then you get the first stage theme, stage one. And that's usually a really strong track. And if it's not, as Don said earlier, it tends to be indicative of the quality of the whole OST. After that, they'll usually throw in your standard boss theme and your stage clear. Then you get the rest of the stage themes, final boss. If there's a true final boss, they'll throw that in afterwards. And then you'll get uh, amalgamation of ending tracks. You'll get a game over, uh, uh, end credits, name entry, uh, that stuff. And that tends to be how most of these soundtracks work. If it's different, it's because, you know, there's there's differences to the way the game works. For example, Dai Fukatsu has this forward and backward thing where you go through stage two, three, and four, obverse, and then reverse. So you get two forms of each one. Or some just have a ton of themes. Like Muchi Muchi Pork, I think, has like eight stage themes or something. Or is that uh, Pink Sweets? Uh, Pink Sweets? I think they both have seven. Seven or eight. So. But but generally, I think, am I right, Don? That format generally holds for all these soundtracks. Yeah, that is true. And bef and just as a little side note, in our interview with Namiki, when it came to composing for Doron Pachi Dai Ojo, he said that all the data for the music needed to be produced in the Amiga MOD format. Wow. And so everything had to be compiled onto a single floppy disk. That's amazing. And it's amazing that it sounds that good. So yeah, he had an eight... 8 voice 8 bit PCM. Wow. That's, that's how he decided, that's how he had to make the music cuz the uh, the hardware for the, the actual game was a pretty was, limited. Was very old, yeah. Yeah, old hardware. That's pretty incredible especially when you listen to that sound. Well, we've talked our way straight through that song, so we're going into the next uh, album. This is uh, CVST 0001 ESP Galuda original soundtrack composed by someone who goes by the name N.T. And this is the only soundtrack he's done for Cave, I believe. Uh, this was before they'd really sort of solidified their lineup. But ESP Galuda's soundtrack was released in 2004. So we had one album in 2003, one album in 2004. We're starting with stage one, which is also the final stage, stage 5.2. Bloody separation, tilde, bloody arrival. So Don, you selected this song. What do you think? I absolutely love this track. I mean, it captures that trancey atmosphere that most of the soundtrack has, and to me it is by far the best theme on the entire album. It's just so catchy and dancey and whatever other adjectives you want to use to describe it. Yeah, I think it has one of the more fully formed melodies, and it is absolutely catchy. I think the stage select music right before it, and then moving from that yeah. to this, sets a really high standard for the audio, which Sadly, I don't think holds the whole way through the soundtrack. There are some weaker stage themes, and I'm not totally enthralled with the boss music. But man, this stage one theme is just spectacular. Yeah, from what I found out, NT is like a unit. Okay. And this particular soundtrack was composed by someone who goes by SOU1, or Switchworks as his alias nowadays. Interesting. Yeah, so that's what I have. Thank you for that background info. All right, now the song I selected is Fort City. This is stage four of the ESP Galuda soundtrack, and I really like this one. I had mentioned that there are some stage themes that are weaker, but I think this one is really, really strong, and it's one that I think if we got more arrangements of ESP Galuda, people would fall head over heels for it. And if you hold out to the very end, of our video series, you will hear more from ESP Galuda. Uh, not published by Cave, but it was a 2005 album that has some really good stuff on it. Right, Don? Yes, I agree. And just another little known fact is that originally Namiki was going to compose for this soundtrack, but he couldn't because of his schedule. Huh. 
And also related to that, Namiki does have one song on here, and this was, you know, it's it's sort of cute looking at it in retrospect, but as it was in development, this is a really cool thing he did, because you don't find this really... I mean, I own a ton of OSTs, and you don't really find this very often, but the last track is uh, essentially an alpha version of to Shinju Forest, and it's Namiki saying, hey, here's what's coming up next. It's like a preview track at the end, and it turns out, you know, to be you know, a hint at Toshinju Forest for Mushihime-sama. And now that we've gotten a full taste of Stage 4, why don't we move ahead to that soundtrack so the next soundtrack published was in 2005, it's the only soundtrack published in 2005. A note about you folks who are collectors, if you buy this album, it ought to come with, if your person you buy the CD from is, is a real collector, uh, you'll get a cool little doll, like a little figure. It's Reko sitting on a tree stump. I actually have it in my house and I absolutely adore it, I think it's lovely. Reko is this sort of larger than life female character with purple hair that uh, it's like Bayonetta before there was Bayonetta. Her hair is just all over the place. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so if you can get this album, you know, try to get that figure to go with your CD. It's it's really a nice visual thing to have with it. Now, Mushihime-sama, this soundtrack is composed primarily by Namiki. Were some of the tracks composed by someone else? Yeah, I would say that... I think Iwata did a handful of tracks off of yeah, this. Yeah, Iwata did the boss theme the stage clear theme, the stage two theme, the stage three theme, and the ending theme. The rest was Namiki. So he did four or five tracks and Namiki does the rest. What we're listening to right now is Don's selection. This is Like a Night of Falling Stars. It's the stage four theme. So here we're hearing it in its raw first form of, first of like, I don't know, like four or five forms, and that's just through official channels. We're not covering Dojin albums, but if we added that to the mix, who knows how many. But, you know, I love this OST just because it is a baseline to start from. And it's amazing that as a baseline from which all the arrangements and remakes follow, it's so good right at the start. Yeah, I really like how this one is quite different from what you'd expect in a normal shmup kind of game. And I think it really fits the scenery of the stage quite well. Oh, absolutely. And I mean, you know, the Mushihime-sama series being very nature-focused, it's all about giant flying bugs shooting things. It's not about the, you know, super technological, you know, cyber warfare Dodonpachi kind of stuff. This is all very natural. It's, um, you know, a lot of people have drawn the connection between Mushihime-sama and Nausicaa. You know, Nausicaa herself was thought of as the insect princess. So for people who like Miyazaki films like Studio Ghibli, and you like Nausicaa, you like giant flying bugs, you're gonna love Mushihime-sama. And yeah, this stage four theme, just beautiful. Let's take a little moment to listen to it. All right, and my track selection, I think this is this is just an iconic song. When I think of Cave, this is the first song I go to in my head. To Shinju Forest, the stage one theme, the, to date, one of my favorite compositions by Namiki. Just so strong, awesome melody. What are your thoughts, Don? Yeah, I, I, I really enjoy this one. Nice, fast-paced, bubbly, bright. But I think when it comes to, I prefer the uh, stage one for the sequel a bit more. Yeah, and I think we will, uh, in time, we will be hearing that. No, I don't think it's on the list. No, maybe we won't hear it. All right, well, one more incentive to hunt down this music is you're only getting a taste of uh, what we have here. I'm going to just give you a little bit more of stage one from the first game, and that's all you're getting. And there's so much more on this awesome OST. I, You know, to me, the Mushihime-sama soundtrack is awesome. But then as we go through here, there's so many more where I'll, I'll have this sort of overflowing emotional reaction. There's just so much good stuff here. And again, this is Manabu Namiki, so 
hey, are you surprised? I'm not. It's just good. All right, from a historical perspective, Cave releases one album a year for three years in a row, 2003, 2004, 2005. Then in 2006, they give us three soundtracks all in one year, starting in January with the soundtrack for Ibarra. Uh, Ibarra is fully composed by the head of Super Sweet, one of my favorite people in the whole world, funny guy, incredibly hard worker, Shinji Hosoi. And so this is a full Hosoi soundtrack. You won't find that anywhere else in the Cave catalog. So to me, Ibarra is very special. It's sort of the beginning of a series, right, Don? It's, it goes like Ibarra and then Pink Sweets and then Muchi Muchi Pork. They're all sort of connected, right? Um, I think Pink Sweets more so than Muchi Muchi Pork. Oh, okay. Because Muchi Muchi Pork, the main enemies are like pig-like creatures and Ibarra and, and uh, Pink Sweets, sweets. kind of have this more mechanical focus. Yeah. Okay, so in any case, yeah, I know that Pink Sweets is called, its subtitle is Ibarra Sorekara, so I know at least there's a connection there. But this, this Hosoe soundtrack is awesome. Now we're listening to Rose Garden, the arranged version of Rose Garden, Stage 6, is track 19, the final track other than the voice collection, which a lot of these OSTs will have all of the little voice clips of the Japanese person, you know, screaming things. So, this is the last musical track, and why'd you select it, Don? Um, well, I do enjoy, like, the original soundtrack. I, I wanted to show something that might not have been used in-game way before they started publishing arranged albums on their own. And I really like the whole rock and choir aspect of this arrangement, and I think it really heightens the original. Oh yeah, and this is a beautiful track. Let's take a listen. Yeah, and it's worth noting that that uh, this is Hosoe self-arranging. He composed it all, and then he put these arranged versions at the end of the disc. And they're they're really good arrangements. Now, the track I selected, and I don't apologize for it, we've already done a couple of Stage 1 themes. I think we've done three or four now. And the Stage 1 theme, which there is no select music here, it's just you put in the CD, track 1, is stage one. It's called Showtime, and man, does it fit that name. It's just like the curtain opens and bam, you are ready to go. This is yeah, totally intense. Let's let's just listen. I love that that synth lead that wing, wing, like it's just it's so good it it just sticks in my head I I could listen to it all day how are your what are your thoughts on this one Don yeah it's just definitely my favorite of the original stage themes on the album and yeah. it it just rocks I also like when he does the the arranged version later on on the soundtrack that he throws in some violin and stuff that you don't normally expect from the composer. In, in fact, like, this synth rock is not something that he does too often anyway. Yeah, yeah, Hosoe doesn't, I mean, he's he's done it, but he's not known for it. And I think uh, this track uh, could serve as an argument that maybe he could be known for it if he just wanted to put out more of this style, because he's certainly good at it. Um, this, this track proves it. 
All right, moving into July of 2006, this is when Dave publishes the two-disc soundtrack, and it's not really two-disc, it's one disc original and a second disc arranged. And we'll talk about the arranged disc later, but first we're going to start with the OST. For ESP Galuta 2, now this one, we'd said NT or uh, uh, Switchworks did the first ESP Galuta. This one is Namiki, right? Yeah, this is Namiki, and like when he's got this, they wanted him to like follow the original game and compose trance music, and he had never really had any interest in trance, so like he bought CDs, did research, and then he was like, this is not my taste in music, so he tried to incorporate trance elements with his own unique flair, and then I guess the director of the game called it Namiki Trance. Namiki Trance, you're hearing it yeah. right now, this is stage five track eight of disc one hatred i've waited a long time for this moment that's the track title by the way i had to say it with emotion because it was that good of a track title and this is a great song and i think namiki trance is right now you've said you read that in an interview yeah might, with us. he might, did that with us yeah so can you tell us a little bit more about where we can find that interview and and when yeah, it was that, conducted the interview was conducted well published in may 2011 I think we sent out the questions earlier than that, but Namiki's a busy guy. And that can be found on squareenixmusic.com slash features slash interviews slash Manabu Namiki, which is M-A-N-A-B-U-N-A-M-I-K-I dot S-H-T-M-L. All right, and we'll have a link. We'll have, a lo- among many other links, we'll have this link um, to the Namiki interview that Simo did in 2011. You can learn a lot of interesting information about Namiki, who is sort of he came to be sort of the the king of music for this genre of game which you know it's a niche genre but uh it certainly has a fan following and when you start playing these games man you can really get sucked in they are fun you know they're they're not addictive in a negative way and they're not necessarily time consuming like an rpg um you know you can play it and put it down but you learn a little more each time you play and you get a little better at dodging those bullets and learning the patterns of the bosses so they really are fun, and, and ESP Galuta 2 is really a fun one to play, I think. So let's let's uh, take a step back and uh, hear some more of Hatred. Okay, now, uh, as promised, I said the second disc was uh, something uh, to be talked about. (laughs) The second disc of the ESB Galuta 2 soundtrack is an arranged album. The arrangements are done by the people that are sort of the cave in-house sound team, and this is really their first step out into the daylight. We'll hear a lot more from them in the future, but honestly, I think they are probably the weakest link, so to speak, as we listen to all the cave music. I'm not trying to put down Masa King or Kizukura or Natsuko Naito. It's just that compared to the Bass Escape people, the Super Sweet people, the other people that come in for the Arrange albums, these arrangements are, in my opinion, a lot of the tracks on that second disc are weaker than the originals. I, I haven't asked you your thoughts on this, Don, but I'm suspect yeah, I would quite agree I would agree with that but I do like this arrangement that you've chosen yeah this is one of the few arranged tracks that I thought really came out well and did justice to the original this is track six deserted younger brother and elder sister and and I believe this is the stage three track yes and uh, it's noted as the monoxide arrange. So I don't know who or what monoxide is from that group. There's five people listed as the arrangers on this album, and they don't give individual credits in the booklet. So some sometimes it'll say someone arrange, and it's really obvious, oh, it's a Masa King arrangement. But I don't know who did this one, but I like it. Let's take a moment to listen. All 
ahead, as this track fades out, we now reach December of 2006. Cave is publishing their sixth album, CVST dash lots of zeros and a five. They've gone from zero to five, numerical order here. I like that. I like sequence. This is the OST for Pink Suites, and this one does kind of the opposite of ESP Galuta 2 in the sense that the original soundtrack, which is disc one, is composed by that same team I mentioned before. A lot of these uh, in-house cave people, uh, Masa King and Kizakura and those people, they do the first disc, and then the second disc is arranged by more well-known, well-established people, including Yuzo Koshiro and others. So. Uh, we're going to start with a track from disc two of Pink Sweets. This is a track that Don chose, and I believe this is one of the Koshiro arrangements. This is, oh gosh, I can't speak Italian or French or whatever this is. Italian. Can you say it? I'm going to attempt it. I don't speak Italian myself either, but it's probably Per Salvare Le Mia Madre, Hard Style Mix. All right, it's the Hard Style Mix of Per Salvare Le House. I can't even do it. I'm not going to try. But it's track nine. Uh, this is a Koshiro arrangement, and Koshiro does three arrangements on this disc, and I like them all, but I think this one is the most enjoyable, so let's take a moment to listen. song that I have selected is arranged by um, a bass escaper, Kimihiro Abe. Well, no longer bass escape, but... Yes, at the time, bass escape. And uh, one of my one of my absolute favorite composers. I consider him a real underdog. Uh, not a lot of people pay attention to him, and I think that's too bad. Um, Abe did the opening track of disc two. The arrangement is titled Cit Citrus Depressa from hell. You'll notice neither of us selected tracks from the OST. They're all right. They're lacking a bit in substance, uh, which is why I think Don and I both gravitate towards the arranged album. But I think this is a great opener to a great disc. This arranged disc is, for me, what makes it worthwhile to purchase the, the whole album. Mm -hmm. 